you have been um, in, the, in the forefront of so many political conversations as a journalist and as someone who is a, a thought leader in your own right, but who reports and investigates. And I'm curious, as, from your vantage point, as you're watching how people go to their corners on, on this particular issue, are there thoughts that you have in terms of covering the subject that we can learn from or um, efforts that you see underway that have been successful that we can emulate? I, I'd just love to get your thoughts in terms of covering this horrible subject and, and how we can open up the lines of communication better in this country. I, I would love to say, yes, I have an answer, and yes, I'm optimistic, but I'm frankly not especially optimistic. And, and it really goes, guns are certainly a clear and present danger and one of the great concerns. And, you know, uh, like all of you, to, to turn on the news at night and see that there's been another mass shooting, whether it's in a, at a school or a college or a workplace or just on the street. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the, the shocking thing is that it's not shocking and that we kind of expect it. Um, when I first came to Washington as a reporter for NBC News in 1978, uh, I, my first job was I covered the House of Representatives. And one of the things that very much impressed me, and look, there were Republicans, there were Democrats, there was political uh, disagreement. One of the things that, that impressed me was the ability of the, the, the parties to get together then, and it was particularly true during the Reagan years in the 80s, and I covered the Reagan White House for six years, that things got done, uh, problems got addressed. There was a crisis with Social Security in 1982, and uh, Ronald Reagan appointed a commission, and it included everybody from Tip O'Neill, the very liberal, Speaker of the House from Massachusetts to Alan Greenspan to some people on the conservative side, and they ended up passing a, a measure that ended up saving Social Security, ensuring its financial stability for another 20 or 30 years. Now we've got a problem again. I remember in the, later in the 80s, they passed an immigration reform bill that included amnesty for people who were in the country illegally, but that crack down on future uh, illegal crossings. Uh, there was a major tax reform bill. The point is things got done. People, and Reagan used to say this, I'd much rather get 75% of a loaf than nothing at all. And so people made compromises. It has seemed to me, and we can talk about why, Governor, to be kind of this steady decline in the ability of our national leaders and, and, and frankly, the whole national discourse to, to try to settle problems rather than to go to your corners and, and, and surround yourself with your tribe and, and like-minded people. And so, you know, is there an agreement? Is there a deal to be made on, on entitlement reform? Is there a deal to be made on uh, uh, immigration? Is there a deal to be made? Not necessarily that would satisfy everybody or on, on guns, but yes, there are deals to be made on sensible common sense. You know, what is the, the percentage of people that support universal background checks? It's, I think it's 98 percent, and you can't even get that through Congress. Uh, but it just seems that our politics has become so tribal, so polarized, so involved in people wanting to score points rather than achieve victories that I, I'm not especially optimistic about it.